old man here, and today we are going to be working on something unique right behind me. That story is coming right up. This is my Burton snowboarding setup. I've got a Burton snowboard here, a Burton boot setup. These are the photons, which are nice. And I've got Burton step-on bindings. And we are going to be doing something special with the binding setup here. Now, for those of you that know anything about snowboarding bindings, your typical old school bindings, you would have a strap that goes around the top of this or in the front and a strap in the back to hold you to the board or rather hold the boots to the board and the step-ons just came out over the last several years uh, that you don't have to use the strap-ons you just click into place very similar to how your ski boots click into your ski bindings they just you step into them and they just click in the into place that's the same thing that's going on here absolutely fantastic setup especially for old guys like me I can just uh, lift the lever up that's on the bindings I'm going to show you that here in a second and you can just step right out of them this is the binding right here uh, that you're looking at and this is the lever that unclicks the boot from the binding there's one on this side I have another one if you look closely here on this side Originally, these were on the inside of your boot. However, I switched them to the outside because it's kind of awkward having to go in between your legs to try to lift that lever up, so it's much easier to do it on the outside. Anywho, the only issue I have with this entire setup is that every time I want to get out of my boots, I have to bend down and grab the lever to lift up on it. And for an old guy like me that has uh, bad knees, quote unquote, <laughs> it gets a little tiring sometimes. We are going to add to this lever right here, a cable that's going to run up the side of the boot binding. And then it'll be a, a lever that you can just pull up on and it will release the binding and we're going to show you how to do that right now before you can even attempt to make a cable system for your bindings to release them you're going to need to order a few items off the interwebs the first thing you're going to need is a mountain bike or road bike cable kit i'll try to put the description of everything in uh, the uh, description below and what this kit comes with is a full cable. These are about six feet long. You're not going to need nearly as long as that. But you're, it also comes with these crimping items that are inside the bag also. You're also going to need a tool that will cut the cable wire. I just happen to have a Park Tools one, most very common. And this is the CN-10 version. So if you go online, you should be able to find one of these quite easily. But it has this little cutting blades at the top which will cut the cables quite cleanly but if you'll also notice here this section here that I'm looking at this will allow you to crimp these pieces that you see in here the silver pieces onto the wire to make it secure and then you're also going to need and I ordered this uh, via eBay it's a very Kind of special item but there is a way around that because these are very rare and very hard to find these are burton these happen to be burton speed lace kits and you can see here it's got the handle on it and it's got this holes in the top of the handle that allow the lacing to go through and you can come back down this is going to be very handy when i'm feeding the wire through uh the top of this to uh, the, the cable through the top of this to secure it so I can pull up on it and it won't uh, come loose. Now, they'll come in a little bag. There's two per bag, okay? So I got one for each boot. And I ordered an extra one because we're also going to do that for one of my daughters 
uh, when she gets uh, Burton step-ons too. Now, as I said earlier, I had to order these um, online through eBay because I could not find any of them in the United States, to be quite honest. They were all sold out everywhere I looked. However, there's a couple of vendors on eBay that had these for sale and they were like $25 and then plus shipping from Germany, that's where I got them from, over to the United States. So I think I ended up paying $25, $35, somewhere around there for a set of two. Is that, is that expensive? Sure is, but it's worth it to me to have the uh, flexibility of not having to bend over each time and pull up on handles, so it was worth it. Now, if you cannot find these, there is another option that you can look at, but it's gonna require a little bit of work and it's gonna be much cheaper. You can go online to like Amazon or your big box uh, home improvement store and look for very specific sewer valve handles. They're going to look very similar to this. They're going to be plastic. There's all sorts of them that you can find and you could get those for about $5 at the time of this video. And then what you will do here is once you get those, they're probably going to be solid, but they're going to look very similar to this. It's going to be a nice big plastic handle. You may need to drill, if you're handy enough, on the top of that to get a hole into it so you can feed your wire through. And you'll have to configure it that way. Um, maybe if I have time, I'll make a video on that. But for now, uh, you can do that option also, and that will give you the same result here. But uh, So that's what you need also. Uh, there may be a few other tools that you may need, maybe a utility knife. I haven't gotten to that point yet. But uh, that's pretty much what you're going to need. Also, you will need a drill. And you're going to need a small drill bit uh, to drill through the binding handles, the, the clips that uh, release the bindings from the boot. Let's go ahead and get started. What I've done here is I've marked with a blade where I want to start the hole and I just got a pilot hole started you can see really closely how that's starting to look and what I'm using is it looks like a 16th inch drill bit perfect you'll notice that I went right in the middle of the lever. You want to leave enough meat on both sides of the hole so it doesn't snap off. I actually ended up ordering earlier this morning a cinching kit. It includes these aluminum connectors and it includes the cinching tool that I have here as opposed to the one I already had. This one would have worked fine, but I actually just bought the kit because it has the numbers on the tip here, as you can see, for the size of the, I think these are called ferrules, that you can uh, use. And if you look real close at these, these are what's called barrel ferrules. So you can actually get the two wires in them and then cinch them down. With our hole drilled, I didn't have to drill anything bigger because this wire that you see here is going to be plenty small enough to fit through the hole, so we're good there. The next thing to do here is to size up the cable wire and size it up so it'll fit through the hole correctly and then figure out how high above the binding I want this to be. Now the cool thing about this is, is that it just slides off from the wire itself or the cable, but I am going to slide the whole thing off because we're going to feed the cable through the bottom and then we're going to put this back on and then I'll cut it to length. Feed it up through the bottom here, get our binding here. We're going to feed our cable back through and you'll see here both of the ends are the same, so it doesn't matter which way it goes back on. And I'm going to feed it right back through the end here. Check 
that out. As I'm progressing through this, this is becoming very easy to do. So if you're even remotely somewhat handy, you can easily do this. What I want here is this handle to be about, about three inches above the back of the binding here, as you can see. And then that will give me enough length where I only have to bend down slightly to grab that. I don't want it too high because it's going to flop all over. I may, actually, I may go a little higher so I, don't, I, could, I really don't have to bend down that much because it's just going to be zip tied to the edge here and it shouldn't flop around too much. Yeah, that's going to be nice. All right, so let's mark that off about right there. So I'm going to cut this housing right about there. It's going to give me about that much length. That should be pretty good. Perfect. Now the cool thing here is I have got this extra one here. I can just use the other end of this to make my second one. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. And we'll cut this one down in the length also. So I actually only needed one of these to be quite honest, but who knows if as I buy and sell, we'll just keep all these handy. So now I've got my two pieces here. Got my wire still sitting there. And now we're just going to uh, feed this back through. All right, got the first one in. Actually cut that one out. All right, there's our wire sitting there, looking pretty good. Next is to run the cable through the handle. And all I'm going to do here is run it through one side. Check this out. It feeds up through here, run it back down through here. Check that out all the way through. You can actually see it starting to take shape here. It's going to be awesome. <clears throat> what I've decided to do here is I'm going to go overboard and I'm actually putting two crimping pieces on here as you can see in the video here and I'm going to make sure that these are as tight as I can get them in a loop. See I'm pulling that together and then what's going to happen here is once this gets to the bottom of the lever it'll be uh, secure there. So again I got this tool here you can see the numbers on the um, side of the crimping piece and that corresponds to the size of the ferrule that you're using this one happens to be I think a 1.2 millimeter or 1.5 millimeter so we're going to use uh, the one that says between 1 and 2 and that should crimp it down pretty good but I want to make sure that this is completely tight I also don't want to leave this little edge here that you can see here I want to get that inside of this crimping tool and uh, something like that. Pull that together as tight as I can. Pull that back. So we're going to do the first one first, which will be the third one in here. So one, two, three. Kind of lock that down. All right, so you can see here how it's crimped in there. You got the two holes that are vertical, so to speak. And I'm just gonna press really hard to crimp that down. So here we go. Perfect. I'm gonna make sure the top of it's crimped too. I don't want any 
chances that this is going to come undone. Do it one more time here to get the bottom of that. Check that out. Bring tight. Yeah. I don't think that's going anywhere. Let's finish it off with uh, the second one here. I know this is overkill, but I'm not, again, I'm not taking any chances. And then one more. Put that tight. Yeah. That is super tight on there. That's not going anywhere. All right, so let's take a look at this. So now that is going to come all the way through. Check that out. Bam. Perfect. Nice and tight. So if I pull on this, that's not going anywhere. And I think what I'm probably going to do at some point if I can find my heat gun, is I'm going to put shrink wrap on the on this right here, uh, heat wrap to make it waterproof so it doesn't rust the wire that is, and we'll seal it up that way. But we're not ready to do that yet. So, anyways, let's get back to it. Check it out. So I've managed to put the cable back in its original position where I want it. And I've got my two ferrules on there with it looped back through the handle into the two ferrules. And then in preparation for adding heat wrap around it, I've actually put a section of heat wrap here, as you can see, which is going to cover this once I crimp these down. And it'll give it a waterproof uh, protection on it. And plus, it won't uh, have the jagged edges on it because this will be covering it. So... Uh, we're going to take care of that later, but right now I've got this in the perfect position and I'm just going to crimp this down like I did down here and uh, we'll show you the end result of that here shortly. All right, so now all we're going to do is we're going to crimp both of these. I'm going to do the top one first, get that one out of the way. Here we go. Nice and tight. That's definitely not going anywhere. And get the bottom one here too. And that's all she wrote. So now we're just going to rinse and repeat on the other one and then we're going to test it out. So stay tuned. I've managed to find a torch to put the heat wrap on and check it out. It's really nice and tight up against where all the metal is showing. The only part that's not is at the top, of course, but it came out really well and the sharp edges are gone and that is nice and tight. I also went ahead and did the bottom here with heat wrap and that's gonna make it waterproof here and the same on the other side here and these are complete. Now when you pull up on this, check it out. Boom, done. And then you just clip it down into place that's going to be awesome. And because I've got two furls on there, uh, this should work out really nice. So now all we have to do is test it. I've got the boots on. I'm inside. And I'm not going to tighten the boots up. We're just trying to test the lever here. So I'm going to clip in and then we're going to try it. Check it out. And on this side. All right, we are clipped in. All right, let's test it out. Here we go. You can see I don't have to bend down that far. Normally, I would have to come all the way down like this. And if you're real tired, obviously, that's going to be bad. But let's test it out. Oh, that looks beautiful. Test this side out. That is awesome. They're just long enough where they're stand up pretty straight and they don't interfere with 
the pants that you're gonna have on. Not that that would be an issue anyways, but uh, yeah, let's try it one more time. Here we go one more time awesome twist out boom awesome success now we have one more test to test it actually on the slopes and see how we get in and out of them by the way these bindings with their lever release is working fantastic as you can see, these look really nice on the back of the bindings. And as you saw in the mountain clip, they worked absolutely fantastic. So I'm really happy with the way these turned out. We're going to continue to use them, obviously. We are going to wrap this one up, call it a day, and head out to the next slopes. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace out.